Hi, this is Ian Kane, Village Barber UK from villagebarber.com. And when I'm not coming here or shaving, I'm listening intently to my favourite podcast, Moustache and Blade. Welcome to the Moustache and Blade podcast, a show dedicated to all things facial fur and traditional wet shaving in an effort to create global facial awareness. And now, here are your hosts... Douglas Smythe and Ryan Stephen Green. Hey, welcome back to Mustache and Blade. This is, in fact, Douglas Smythe from HowToGrowMustache.com and Ryan Stephen Green. Today's show is brought to you by Synergy Shaving Soap, which can be found at HowToGrowMustacheStore.com. Check it out. It just may change your life. It's true. Another thing I'd like to add is if you'd like to get in contact with us, you can email either Ryan or myself at Douglas at MustacheAndBlade.com or ryan at mustacheandblade.com. If you'd like to phone in a question to be answered live, or, well, as close as we can get to live with a podcast, please call in that question at 347-333-1511. If you're outside of the United States, dial 001 first. And again, the number is 347-333-1511. You can direct your questions to me, to Ryan, to Lynn Abrams, even to Mantic. And we'll, we'll be glad to play that live on the show. Again, live, <laughs> in quotes. And we have such a great, inspiring show today for all of you. This past June 12th, superstar barber Miguel Gutierrez set out on a barbering adventure across five continents, armed only with his backpack, his trusty shears, and a cameraman. His goal? Survive by his mere trade alone, traveling wherever the road would take him and his scissors, He's been studying and expanding his understanding of the craft with all the barbers he's met along the way. We caught up with Miguel recently in Thailand, where it was 1 in the morning there, 1 p.m. here, possibly 10 a.m. where Ryan is in L.A. (laughs) We invite you to join us in this next interview and share in the adventures of the Nomad Barber, where his passion for life is infectious and inspiring. So without any further ado, we bring you Miguel Gutierrez, the Nomad Nomad Barber. Barber. Okay, now we'd like to bring the Nomad Barber, Miguel Gutierrez, onto the show. How are you doing today, Miguel? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so great to have you on the show. We've been following your adventures on YouTube, and it's (laughs) mind-blowing. We are so stoked to have you here with us today, and I never say the word stoked, so you know I'm serious. (laughs) Today's a special day. Today's a very special day. Yeah. So normally we interview barbers or wet shavers or mustachioed aficionados, but now today we have this new breed of barber on the show, which is you. Yeah. And a lot of our listeners may not know who or or what you're about and what in fact you are doing. So could you give them a little breakdown of where you're at, what's going on and how you came to this? Maybe not in that order. Maybe just give us a little brief introduction about you and your mission. Um, so basically I'm on a world mission trying to discover the the secrets and you know the history of the barbershop um it's the the trip is basically spanning up to 25 countries give or take a couple it started off as an idea you know about maybe 10 months and 10 months before the trip actually started and it was basically me planning to go around with a gopro and filming haircuts in cool places and trading trading haircuts for money (laughs) or whatever i could get and then slowly it turned into the web series what what it is now on youtube wow that's amazing now, just a little background on yourself. Where are you originally from? Um, I come from Liverpool in England, which is many people know is where the Beatles are from. Ah, the Beatles. And, and, the, and the, <laughs> the, the best football team in the world, soccer team. <laughs> you can say football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cultured. <laughs> I get it. Um, yeah, so I've been working in the barbershops for over 10 years now. And I started off in a family-run barbershop. And I really knew what I wanted to go for when I, when I started the trade. Um, and you know, hopefully I'm about halfway to where I want to be now. So, <laughs> and that, it's not halfway around the world either. This, this yeah, this sure. Second time. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. To what extent was, you know, world travel involved in those initial plans? Um, I guess basically like, what I always had a trip planned a few years ago and it didn't work out for some certain reasons. And when I came up with the idea for this trip, I basically want to incorporate Uh, film which is what I really love and I've always enjoyed photography and videography and also obviously try and keep my you know hands in in, in the barbering industry and it's worked out you know 
even better than I ever imagined because people have actually take, taken notice and thought, you know, wow, actually there's different avenues you can, you can take as a barber. Yeah. It's like a marriage of your passions. Yeah. Congrats, man. You did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a unique concept and I'm, I'm really glad. The main thing that I wanted to do is inspire people to, you know, to, to go out there and sure. you know, do what they want, you know, come up with an original concept and just really just really chase your goals and, you know, your dreams as well. So because it, it, it can happen. Yeah. What's, what's been leading? Is it, is it the, the barbering follows the filmmaking or is it the filmmaking follows the barbering? It's a little bit of both. Like I'm really inspired by both aspects to be honest. Cause I mean, not many people know this, but I do quite a lot of the video for the, for the documentary as well. And the web series, it goes hand in hand perfectly. It's 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 just it's just perfect for me. It's everything I love about you know project. It's creative. It's fun. We get to travel. We get to meet people. We get to go to random places, have adventures. Yeah. It's, it, it couldn't be any couldn't be any better. It's been about six months since the last time we talked, and that was before you left yeah. for your trip. How's it been going so far? I mean. Yeah, do you have any amazing stories you can share with us at this moment? <laughs> I, it didn't, you know, it's been such a whirlwind. To sum it up, is just impossible at this point. <laughs> to sum it up, it'd be pretty difficult. I mean, we, we it's so tiring. Like you don't like people don't understand how much actual work we put into this. We're we're breathing, living, working for, for barber shops, for traveling, uh, day in day out. We we must have had about forty overnight buses now. Oh, wow. We're walking around with, with, you know, we've got big backpacks and, you know, about 10% of that is clothing. Everything else is equipment. Yeah. Um, we're living off a really tight budget and we've got no help from any production companies or anyone. So it's really just really just an experience in itself. And the, the, the thing that makes the trip is the amazing people we've met through the barbershops and out of the barbershops. It just show, goes to show that, you know, the world is such a beautiful place. <laughs> it really is. And the people in it really, really, you know, they make it. Yeah, for sure. I so appreciate that, you know, just watching the web series, that it's such a celebration of humanity and the people that you you come into contact with. I'm curious because, you know, you run into people who are like in, you know, in, in the Grease episode that are in like a men's parlor, this lavish men's parlor. And then in India, they don't even have a shop. Their shop has been taken away from them. They're just barbering Contrast. out on the street. I'm curious as to like what what is essential to being a barber. What are the, what are the tenets that each barber has? What makes a barber? I suppose <laughs> is what I'm asking. What makes a barber is a very good question, and I believe. I mean, it's hard to explain. Like, I went through. I've been through stages in my career where I've hated it, but it only lasts about three weeks, four weeks, like any job really. But then when you get the passion back for it. For me, it's the the best job in the world. We get to talk to people all day. We get to have fun. We get to you know wear cool clothes. <laughs> we can get tattoos if nice. we want. And I guess I guess it's it, there's been a bit of an uprising in in barbering, and it's a bit of a cool thing these for days. For sure. And I think I'm I'm glad that people have you know stood up and take taken notice that actually it is a really good job. But I mean, across the world, you go to all these barber shops, and we've seen so many different types. We've seen street barbers. We've seen, you know, like the you know the nice ones in Greece, and it really is. I mean, it's, for some people, it's a necessity. It's not. It's not a job they choose. It's one they're born into, and that's what. But but the thing that like you know is the same in all the barber shops is that they've still got the passion for it, and they still you know they still enjoy what they do. And I guess most barbershops we've been to as well all hold, even though it's, you know, it changes across cultures, but they all hold that sort of, you know, the place for guys to go and chat right. and, you know, really bond with each other. Right. The barbershop culture, it yeah. seems to have been on a decline over the years, but is now coming back. Uh, and it's maybe it's that human yeah. element that you really can't get in a chat room. Yeah, yeah exactly. And like, I mean, the, the, the great thing about it is, is, you know, People are saying, oh, wow, actually, Barbara's cool now. And there's so many people who want to learn, which is, I mean, you know, when I take over the world and open yeah. all my barbershops, I need more staff. So <laughs> <laughs> are you recruiting on this trip? <laughs> no, no, yeah. But I've got I've got my eye on a few a fair few barbers on, on, on social media that I definitely want to hire. So that's really cool. what about what about beliefs around hair? I, I, you know, you read, you read in history or maybe in, in religious texts or something, there's, there's all sorts of, um, 
uh, I guess, beliefs around hair. Maybe you, you shave your head off for shame or maybe you, you know, cut your beard for, you know, for, for grief or something like that. Have you come across any, any strange, I guess, beliefs or energy around hair itself? It's funny you should ask that. I mean, we, we went to Varanasi in India and we made a video around basically the burning guts where they, they burn bodies for, of, of people in, in, in public. And um, we haven't released that video because it's an extra special video. Um, and I think we're going to into a short film because the visuals around there are incredible. But basically, mm. around the burning guts, you do, you walk down and there's people being burned. They get walk. You, you, they basically walk people down the alleyway, the dead bodies, and walk them to the fire basically to get burnt in public. And around there, there's a barber, and the barber sits underneath the burning guts. And he shaves the head. I think it's one of what, the head of each um, family. One of the males. He shaves the head and the face, so they get completely everything off. And then I think I can't remember exactly what it is, but I think after ten days, every other boy in the family has to do it as well as a sort of sacrifice. It's basically opening up to the Hindu god. I didn't look too much into the religious things. So I was going to do that later. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> We caught you off guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a really cool video, and I mean, the the meaning behind it. It uh, we've got we we've done the interviews with the barber who explained everything about it, uh, but we haven't translated it yet. So. <laughs> I had a question about the translation because a lot of the time in in the web series, it seems that you're asking the questions in English, and they'll respond in their native language. But other times it seems that you're having a translator in between. What point are you ascertaining, I guess, the meaning of what they're saying? Is it is it happening as you're speaking to them or or later on when you're when you're editing or translating the footage? I think I basically speak every language in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Decoder uh, ring. No, no. Um, I think we ask enough questions with each barber. And we're, we're trying to sort of, you know, change it up a little bit now. We're for a few months into sure, the trip. Sure. But we ask enough questions. And we get to know the barbers enough that we and we explain to them that you know we don't just want short answers, uh, we want a real story. We want to educate people about the barber shop. And not, obviously, not every question goes into the web series. But for every barber that has three answers, we've asked them fifteen questions. You know, sure, yeah. so once sure. we translate them back, we know that we're going to get some good questions, especially after you know getting to know them as people. And, and you know we don't we 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 film some barbers who you know we don't get good answers from and we don't include them because we can't because it's not the right content. Sure, yeah. That's the thing about not having a you know a big budget in a production company. We can't hire translators. Our translators so far have come from couch surfing, rickshaw drivers, you know, a kid on the street. Yeah. <laughs> um. So it's all about improvisation with our trip. Mm, I respect that. You're on camera quite a lot. I I, ima- I I don't know. I imagine that previous to this trip, you you didn't have like an on screen. You know, you're not going out for auditions. You're not in front of the camera a whole lot. How have you experienced being in front of the camera? Uh, how has that been for you? Have you noticed your 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 emotions or your performance <laughs> changing? I guess. Yeah, I think I think I don't. I mean, personally, for me, people have told me that as the videos go on, they, I seem a lot more relaxed. Naturally. Um, and I'm not there to steal the show, but it's, you know, it's, we're also still showing the trip through my eyes in a sense. Cause yeah, I'm the traveling barber, <laughs> you are. but, um, <laughs> I, th- <laughs> I think, yeah, I've definitely got a, lot, got a lot more relaxed in front of the camera and the way I work best is if I'm, if it's not scripted, if I can just talk, cause I can talk quite a lot. I could talk for the whole of England. Appreciate that. Um, but if, if you put a page of words in front of me, like, I, uh, I'll mess it up and stutter so much that <laughs> you wouldn't believe. So I'll never be a great actor. I'll always just be a, a, bar, a barber host. <laughs> <laughs> and a darn good one at that. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, I think that that your genuineness is so palpable on camera. I, I guess we've we've kind of gotten used to the, the very, very self-aware YouTube star, the very, very self-aware host on TV. And it's refreshing that it looks like you're kind of shooting from the hip. You know, it has the feel of, I'm just here and I'm doing this thing and I'm inviting you guys along and it, it's maintained that freshness. And I really appreciate that. Well, I mean, the, the great thing, like what I always think is before I started this trip, I always thought 
I wonder what barbering's like in India. And I'd YouTube it and I'd see a shave video and that's it. And I'd go, I wonder what it's like, you know, in, you know, in Nepal or Vietnam. I wonder what barbering's really like. So for me, it's it's me trying to find out it like what like I'm genuine because I'm asking the questions because yeah. I want to know. <laughs> Do you exactly. know what I mean? It's because it's 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 for me. It's educational as well. Um. So it's it. Yeah. That's that's what. That's the driving force. Yeah. Have you learned anything about the singe technique yet? Have you done it yet? The singe technique. Um, yeah, yeah. I've done like the, I've only done. I've only seen it in Turkey with like the ear hair singeing and the, the facial. Yeah, they explained it to me. But I mean, I, I've had it done in in, um, mm-hmm. in England yeah. before. I used to go for Turkish shaves at the barber shop. It's it's a weird experience. It doesn't hurt at all. But they say it's better than threading. But then people who do threading say <laughs> it's better than than hair singeing. But it's definitely a service I'd like to offer in the future. If could you explain it to our listening audience, what exactly we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. So basically, the, the the barbers get like a metal rod, or so I've seen people use like nail clippers before as well or anything like a long metal thing and you wrap it in cotton and then you dip it into like an alcoholic solution. I I don't know what the actual solution is called. (laughs) Um, I should Google that as well. (laughs) Basically they light the fire. Like you were lighting a, you know, a shot of Sambuca or whatever. And, and they basically, they tap it on the face, but not so it's hitting the face. Um, tap it really fast. But, and then the, the other hand basically covers the, like the eyebrows so you don't take off the eyebrows and also the hair and it, it basically just burns all the little hairs off um so you don't have to wax yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. pluck it out i guess so it's good for like you know above the beard where you get them 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 hairs that people don't want to shave or the ear hairs where you know uh, as you get a little bit older they start to sprout out <laughs> have an experience i don't want to hear one. that miguel coming attractions yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But how effective, how, how long, how long does the, do the effects of that last? Um, I guess it's a little bit shorter than if you actually pull the hairs out, but it, it makes it nice and smooth and clean. And it's, it's actually just, if you go and get a Turkish shave, the Turkish shave is the best shave in the world. <laughs> so I've heard. I love getting shaved. I absolutely love it from a bob, especially from a barber's perspective. I like seeing what people yeah, do. Sure. And a Turkish shave where they send you hair at the end, they give you a, a head mm-hmm. massage, little arm massage. You walk out of there and you never felt more like a gentleman in your whole life. Monaco. I walk out there like I've got a cane and a top hat, but actually I'm in a t-shirt and shorts. Sunglass Monaco. Let's, yeah, yeah, exactly. let's take it into the now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I love watching the Turkish shave videos. Someday I need to get over there and make that happen. I mean, for, for mm-hmm. people who are learning from the age of 12, and they do it so, they do it in such a manner, like, I know the difference between shaves now and I know if it's going to be good straight away or not. And they're so fluid in the motions that they don't even have right. to look at your face. It's like Jedi barbering. Yeah, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It's just like in Indian barbers as well. Indian barbers come. In fact, Indian barbers are probably just as good, <laughs> to be honest. Actually, the best the best shave I've ever gotten is um, the the street barber you were talking about before who lost his shop by the government in Hampi. That was the best shave wow. I've ever had. Is, how much of it is the experience itself? Say, just the fact that this man has lost his his shop and he's you're out on the street. I mean, how much is, is the environment? How much does that factor in for you? It was very relaxing because it was in like just, just lots of trees around. But it was more so the fact of, of his mannerisms and like how much you could see he cared about his job. Right. regardless of if he's just had his shop demolished he's still outside he's still proud and he's still you know he takes his time and that's that shows you that his heart is in the barbershop and in barbering even not his barbershop because i got no time oh, sheesh. <laughs> right have you studied with baba yet the cosmic barber yeah yeah wait, have you seen you're not seeing the video oh right no yeah yeah i've missed that Tell me about it. What was Baba I like? I don't want to go too much into it because it would probably make the video seem different to what the actual experience yeah, yeah. was. But I, I think I should tell you guys because you, because the, <laughs> the real people want to know. The real... Yeah. Inquiring minds want to know. He basically he basically harassed us for money. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We, oh, but oh. Put it this way. We, we paid him. We, we haven't paid the barber apart from him so far because we knew that, you know, we wanted to make a video with him. And... We in the end we give him like a it's not not a lot of money but a lot of money Whoa. to us and basically an average wage in India for a month. Wow! And he was like, wow. He was like, is that it? 
<laughs> That's a shame because you were really looking yeah, forward I, I to meeting a, him. I was a little bit disappointed because he was, he, I mean, he basically just kept on going about how cool he was. <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> and, and I mean, the massage, I, I got a better massage in India off a few people. But I mean, it was still the experience. Right. Like it, it, it was the, the problem. I don't think he wasn't a bad person, but I think a lot of people have screwed him over, which is why I think he's very very particular with westerners uh, now yes. i think a lot of people have you know fed him false promises and stuff like that but at the, i mean at the end like we'd be you know we became friends but yeah it was an, it was an interesting guy <laughs> but he had a really cool story so yeah um, i can imagine so it was funny though because our youtube video we made like a bit of a like a tribute to him oh, so we made like, a, like extra special cut and we asked him to be more theatrical <laughs> and then people just hated it on youtube oh jeez People didn't like the way we shot it. They just wanted um, <laughs> one long shot. Right, of, right. Yeah. Have you have you have you heard of ASMR? No. Is that what it's called? AMSR. AMSR. It's, have you heard of it? No. A- I think it's AMSR. Uh, anyway, it's basically when you watch a video and the relaxing feeling that you get. It's basically that. It's so there's lots of videos on YouTube now called ASMR, ASMR. where like women like just whisper into the camera <laughs> that they're like, <laughs> yeah, Jeez. it's like it's like a weird thing. So I think people wanted that from the video. Hand motions into the camera and one screaming baba. <laughs> ASMR. We should do some ASMR on our podcast, Ryan. So if we just if we just started if we just started See talking us, like this, nice and so nice nice and on the second right day of August, we doing all shit we're doing ASMR, ASMR right now. So right? Can can <laughs> yeah, I'm working out a little bit too. <laughs> I like it too. Much, yeah. <laughs> it got okay, weird. Okay, from from Baba the the cosmic barber to now, I haven't watched all the episodes. I've I've watched probably half of the episodes. But the moment, and, and I, I don't know how much Doug has told you about me, but I'm, I'm a documentary filmmaker. Yeah. And the moment, I, I mean, literally, my eyes are still swamps right now <laughs> because I, I watched this just before we called oh. you, is, is um, Suresh in Nepal. Ah, uh, yeah. And, and his, his new pair of clippers. I mean, the, the thing that's so beautiful about documentary filmmaking and what you captured in this moment with Suresh is are moments of humanity that like you can't there's no way to fake I'll, I'll try to describe it but the best thing would be if if any if if you're listening to this podcast to just watch it but Suresh is so overjoyed it seems by this gift of of clippers that he he can't first of all he can't hide right. the grin on his face second of all he can't do anything except repeatedly <laughs> hug you yeah. And I, I mean, just hours before or the day before, he's a complete yeah. stranger. And that's just like, I, I literally started weeping <laughs> uh, watching that because it's so beautiful. Can you just can you just give us the behind the scenes on that on that moment or the, your relationship with Suresh? I mean, I knew he was a very special guy. And after hearing about his story, I knew I wanted to help him. I knew he was a he was, a, you know, he didn't he didn't have the money to go to school, basically. And he comes from a, a family of barbers where, you know, they're, they're born into it or born into that caste in Nepal. Um, and we got to go to his house. He invited us over for chicken and rice, basically. And we'd seen his house the day before. And, you know, as a Westerner, you're skeptical. You're like, oh, you know, it looks a bit dodgy. <laughs> like, am I going to oh, get geez. sick? Is it rude to say no? Like, you know. But he was such a nice guy. We trusted him. And actually, it was the best food we've had of course, in a nice. long time. And we got to sit in a room with, you know, you saw the video. There was, you know, nine, nine to 12 people. People kept walking in and out. And it's a block where basically all the barbershops live on that. And, and nobody is from Pokhara. Everyone lives about six hours away. And they wow. all come to work there um, to try and make a wage for their families. And, you know, 15 hours a day to them, it's not work. It's just it's just daily life. Mm-hmm. Um, six of them share a room. And we were sitting on the bed, this, the bed that we filmed on. It wasn't a bed. It was wood. <laughs> it was just wood. Oh, that's wow. what they call a bed. Yeah. yeah. So there's three of them on that bed. You know, there's three on the floor. They've got one pot and pan in the corner. And you know what? They're happy. They're happy people. And that was sort of so inspiring for me. And I guess seeing the reactions, because I mean, you're in the moment, but you don't realize how it affects people until you put it out there. And I think now that right. I've seen that, I think it's a turn and point it for me. And it's given me a lot of new ideas of how I want to, you know, try and take this project further. So 
And and another thing I've got in the pipeline is I'm going to be releasing some Nomad Barber t-shirts. So I've got a few designs. And one of them is going to be a portrait shot of Suresh. And I'm going to donate money um, from the proceeds towards opening a shop for him. So I'm going to try and open it. Ah. I'm going to try and buy him a barber shop. That's my plan. Wow. Wow. Very, very nice. What was it? What was it that so affected you with him? Just what was it specifically? Can you do you know what it is? It was he was he was his genuineness and he wanted to help us. And that was, you know, he could have been, you know, trying to get people in the shop, trying to work and earn his living, but instead he spent time with us. Um he he did everything we asked of him and more. And he was I'm sure you can tell from the video how sweet of a person he is. Like he was like do you know, without saying I like a man too much, <laughs> he's, <laughs> you know, he's literally one of the sweetest, cutest people you could ever meet. And if yeah. anyone ever would ever deserve another chance, it's him. Like, I've never met anyone more that I've more, like, I wanted to help more. Very cool. Yeah. I will definitely put links in the show notes so people can see Suresh and who we're talking about. Now, you have the documentary coming up and the webisodes going on right now. You got a clothing line you're speaking of. Is there a book we're going to see eventually? I'm planning to uh, to, to create a, a photography slash, um, yeah, adventure of of the Nomad Barber book. Coffee and, table. I mean, I've got a lot of plans and stuff. Uh, uh, not not necessarily to make money, but to try and you know bring a bit more light onto the industry. Oh sure. To show that that there's you know there's different ways you can do things, and it's educational. I wanted to maybe I'm thinking about doing an app as well. With all the oh. all the videos on, and you know, educational videos as well. And th- I mean, this trip isn't the end of the of the project. I've got lots of ideas, which is, you know, I- I'm pretty sure so many TV is going to buy into it because I've got some really cool ideas of how barbering can actually, like like the Suresh moments, like we can really change people's lives with the barber yeah, shop. And I agree. Right, you and I, we're on the next we're on the next trip with them. <laughs> how do you feel about that? Sure, uh, dude. let's do it. I'm all about it, man. I'm all about it. I, I like my my travels as a filmmaker are. I guess it it always comes down to people, you know. You you make you make a a web series or even a documentary about barbering, and what is the film really about? It's about people. You make a film about Volkswagen, it's really about people, and that's what I think. That's what I so appreciate about the documentary format. Is it just it's at at its best? I think it's a celebration of life. And um, you're certainly, certainly capturing yes. that with with uh, your, your current web series. So, man, big time kudos for that. Yes, bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think like uh, what we're trying to take in as well is that, you know, we're trying to capture people, people from all different walks of life, you know, which, you know, like the wealthy barbershops, the street barbershops, you know, the rockabilly barbershops. I mean... There's so much more to come as well. I, I don't know any of the web series that lasts a year and puts out you know, 25 <laughs> episodes of just pure yeah. barbering. So. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. I mean, <laughs> realistically, we're a podcast existing now in this day and age about mustaches yeah. and wet shaving. Yeah. Is that what it's about? <laughs> Honestly, it's really just about people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I mean... You're on location, you're under palm trees, you're on top of buildings. What is that like in the moment? I mean, what's going through your head when you're doing this? Yeah, it's 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 sometimes funny, like just finding the locations, finding someone to do it with. You know, sometimes it's people we've spent a week with. Sometimes it's someone we've just met. <laughs> we just did a haircut in the, in the temples at Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Wow. And basically we were trying to make sure guards weren't coming along because it's a world heritage <laughs> site and where i'm just sitting there with a with a chair here. Her. it's a really surreal experience yeah, and, yeah you know i mean i'm really happy that i've got photos of me cutting hair all over the world because it's something i can show my grandkids with pride yeah. you know yep i mean the whole thing is like a spectacle it's very similar to busking or being a street yep. musician you got the crowd around you you're doing this in all these places you're like when I say new breed, you're like the new breed rock star barber. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's extreme barbering. It's what yeah. you call it. It's what it is. Extreme barbering, yeah. And it's like it's 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 like Ryan says. It's more about the you know 
the celebration yeah. of you know the world and people and everything like that and it's not necessarily about it's not i don't want it to be about me or how good i am as a barber right. because i don't want to prove that i want to i want to show the world what barbering is like everywhere else and you know how just how good of a trade it is like yeah, I, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm super proud to be a barber and you know i've never felt more like it in my whole life but you know but at sometimes don't you just want to give the devil horns to the crowd and do the bows and <laughs> you know indulge in it for a for a second i mean it truly is cutting yeah. edge and that pun was definitely intended yeah i mean it's it's funny like a, a like um a couple of people have started to like recognize us like me and mike were sitting in the bar in bangkok <laughs> and khao san road and we're just sitting there i'm super tired and some woman come, walks over and I'm like, oh, she's looking at me. And then she's like, you're the nomadic barber. And I'm like, yes, I am. And then I was like, yeah, that, that was about the only rock and roll moments I've had on the trip. That happened. <laughs> there will be more. There will <laughs> definitely be more. It's only the beginning. Especially when we're on board with you for the next trip. I'll be doing the bows for you. <laughs> Passing the hat. Well, when I come over to, to come over there, you know, make a special episode. Actually, we should, when you're over here, we should definitely have a special episode. You know, you could be snipping our hair while we're doing the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Where are, you, where are you guys based again? He's in LA, California. Okay. And I'm in Massachusetts. Okay. So we're on both sides of the country. <laughs> two stops. Well, I'm going to both sides oh, anyway. Oh, you are. Um, of course. I get so worked up and so excited when people invite me places that I try and fit too much into one thing. So... Basically, until like a week ago, the U.S. was going to be about 50 cities. <laughs> Good luck there. <laughs> but I've had, I mean, I've put, I had to cut it down because it was going to be too much. And um, we are basically, I think, doing like San Fran, Sacramento, L.A., San Diego, and then going over to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of places in Canada and then down through to in New York where I'm holding an event about the art of hair, which you guys are more than welcome to come. I will definitely check that out. I would, I would love to see you if you, if you'd pass through just to shake your hand and thank you, you know, in person for, for the work yeah. you're doing. I'll have to trim the mustache as well. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I kept it trimmed, you know, I kept it really like trimmed and thin for a long time. I've had it for almost seven years now, you know, yeah. And uh, I I think Doug probably inspired me to just <laughs> let it grow, man. Let grow it grow. It. Bring it back. So I've been I just for probably about a month, maybe a little bit more now, just haven't been haven't been trimming it anymore. Nice. So. Are you coming through Boston at all? Boston? Maybe, but more so maybe just I don't know. There's a place on the way to New York that I want to go. Have you seen the guy who cuts homeless people's hair? No. Joe Joe Samaris or something and he basically sets up his stool every week uh, I think it's um, it's not far I don't think it's too far from New York northern oh, New York it's in Connecticut and he basically sets up every Wednesday night and uh, cuts out local homeless people's hair for free um, so gonna go and try see him but yeah maybe Boston I've been a few times so I, I, yeah. like, I love that city so excellent if you're in Boston I'm there 100% if you're in New York yeah. I'm there 95% yeah. I'll bring my recorder <laughs> and we'll do it well, actually, you guys are, should come and show off at the, the, the event. It's called The Art of Hair, and it celebrates all types of hair. So mustaches are more than welcome. So come and, come and display your work. We don't get stopped the door for having a stash. Like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is happening in New York? Yeah, yeah it's going to be a massive event. I'm basically doing it with um, uh, pop-up art events. And they, uh, me and Juliet, are uh, planning an event which is going to be, you know, a, a 600 capacity theater oh. in New York. Um, it's going to be a pretty huge event. We're displaying art and hair from all walks of life, different ways, you know, paintings using hair. We're getting, like, wow. you know, college students involved. We're going to have a, a college day as well where people come down to, to visit. And I, I'm going to be displaying some of my photography, my videos, and having a chat. What's the date for this? It should be around, I'll confirm it with you, but it should be the end of February. We're thinking around the 22nd of February. I would love to come to that event. Ryan, let's do this. Dude, I, the, the East Coast is calling me for some reason right now. It's yeah, second time in two months. I, I'm serious, guys. Like, you should get involved because we could really do something to do with the mustaches oh, yeah. there. To love it. Totally. And shaving. In 
wet shaving for sure. In fact, let's let's bring it to that direction right now. What's going on in your wet shaving world? I mean, have you learned any new techniques? Um, I, I think the main thing is I've just realized what a good wet shave is and how how I need to improve to be sure. on that level of wet shaving. Um, I've seen many different ways. Like in India, they just literally cold water. They put the, the, the foam on, on the corner of your chin and then lather up from there a little bit of water. And I always thought, oh, you need a hot yeah. towel. You need hot water. You need hot lather. Otherwise, you're going to have a sore face. Mm-hmm. But actually, the, with their expertise, amazing shave. <laughs> yeah. No, there's some people that swear. There's some people that swear by the, the cold water yeah, shave. Yeah. When I was traveling in South America, we didn't have hot water. So I had no. to learn how to shave with cold water. I'd be talking to my friends who'd been there for a while. Like, how do I do this? Do I have to heat up the water? Like, no, man. Just shave <laughs> with cold water. Give it a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not too bad. Obviously, the preparation is better for your skin. The longevity of your skin is going to be a lot better if you look after it better. But, like, that, I mean, that technique. And another technique, but it, I wouldn't call it a technique. But the, one of the Indian barbers, basically, he faced my head down, chin down, and shaved backwards while my head is forward, which is the weirdest thing. But I actually got super smooth and it didn't irritate. Ooh. And I've got super sensitive skin. So I, he, That's he let my head forward. And all, as the skin was all taut underneath yeah. my chin, he shaved against yeah. the brain like that. Yeah. And I was like, is he going to kill me? Or? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, the Turkish barbers, they all use like ball brush. They don't use badger. Um, like that's my favorite in fact yeah oh, it's a, like a big one and the they use a thing I think it's called Durham is it yep it's like a cologne but it, oh yep. it's so nice I order a lot of stuff from a Turkish website oh wow the Arco was he using Arco for the shaving soap it's really big in Turkey and in the wet shaving world I'm sure yeah I'm sure I had it yeah it's, it's got a unique smell, smell. Yeah, it's like, yep that's it. it it's a stick it's wrapped new techniques I wouldn't say I've learned that many new techniques i've just seen how to do it better and how i can perfect a shave in general sure. um but just seeing how people do it differently like i've had a couple of terrible shaves uh, yeah really bad shaves. To happen <laughs> <laughs> do those ones make the web series or no 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 maybe maybe one of them is going to but i won't <laughs> tell you which one <laughs> we'll figure it out we have trained eyes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are you even shaving on this trip at all are you getting shaves done um it's been it's funny because like because i'm so used to having the chair the hot water the hot <laughs> spoiled it was it'd be a strange experience for me but we i shaved mike yes, my camera i saw that for one the Mo- them promo, and also i give him a shave the maybe the couple of days later at the three brothers barbershop in bangkok i just say can i use your chair i need to refresh <laughs> my shaving skills uh, yeah um, but basically, I'm going to work in Singapore for six days at three different shops. So I need to get the shaving back on track. Yeah, no doubt. Singapore, eh? Yeah, yeah. Three different types of shop. There's um, there's like a, basically a, a few businessmen opened the shop called the Sultans of Shave, like an upmarket barber shop. Um, and then there's the the panic room, which is two two chairs that used to be in the street, but now in a pantry <laughs> run by it like a... A group of guys who sell all all the American pomades. It looks super. Cool. <laughs> and then there's the Hounds of Baskervilles, which is also a tattoo shop, yeah. and the guys uh, look super cool. Have you heard of Have you heard of Scorum? Scorum, the ones in Amsterdam and uh, Rotterdam. No, I haven't. The the like the most famous barber shop in the world right oh, now. Oh like, yes, that's the one with the guys covered in tattoos. Oh, no, is no, that no. It's what a, I'm thinking it's a, of? It's about ten guys, but they're all covered in tattoos. Yeah, yeah, tattoos, yeah, piercings, yeah, yeah. punk rock. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. It's basically really yeah, yeah, cool. No, 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 sorry, it's not them, but it's basically the <laughs> Sing- it, it's basically the Singaporean alternative. Uh, oh, okay, the, on, their counterpart on, on that level. Them haircuts, <laughs> slick haircuts, you know, super sharp tapers. Yeah, rockabilly. The game face on the new yeah, breed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much of this trip, I guess, was set up before you ever left? you know, you knew what you were going to be doing and how much of it has just been improvising. Were you looking places up before beforehand or are you doing that on the fly? I organized the first barbershop we went to. No. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Nice. nice. We turned up to Paniotti's shop, the 1900 barbershop, the guy in the super slick suits, super cool, mm-hmm. cool guy. The men's parlor, it looks like. And he goes, he goes, so what's your format? 
I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and I, I, you probably noticed from the Greece episode to the Turkey episode, halfway through the Turkey episode, we switched it up to a more on fly in the wall doc. Right. So it's less like sit down interviews and more so, you know, just having a chat. Comfortable. Um, I felt like we needed to change the style up because I'd be more relaxed. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. We've had some dilemmas as well with the improvisation because our audio recorder, I don't know if you've ever used a Tascam audio recorder. Yes. But they like to, yes, Ryan has one right they now. They like to die. <laughs> oh, really? Our, 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 our DR100 or whatever, every every interview we do, it says file error and we lose like, uh, we, uh, we're, we're in need of a new audio recorder, put it that way. Get the oh, Zoom. Oh yeah, Zoom. Not not a good thing to hear as we're recording a podcast on a Tascam <laughs> DR100. <laughs> it got real meta all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't got the file error yet, but oh, one's like four years old, I think. Oh, okay. Um, so basically, like we've lost without realizing we've lost like four interviews with barbers that that were amazing because of the oh, and like we've had things like tripod lost and. Uh, we almost lost a camera, you know, we've lost a few batteries, like everything. It's so, it's difficult there. Didn't I see that you've had two of the MacBooks stolen too or something like that? We had one stolen in Kathmandu. Um, so that was the more powerful MacBook. That was my cameraman's MacBook. And now we're on my one, which is seems to not like editing programs that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, a lot of things have happened and gone wrong, but we're like trying to keep the momentum going as much as we can. It's really going to be nonstop. I mean, you're filming and you're editing while you're traveling. I mean, coffee shops, cyber cafes, on the bus. Basically, yeah, anywhere and <laughs> everywhere. Like, yeah, on the bus. Like, I've, I've actually, I've, I've acclimatized. Just to, I don't get motion sickness anymore because we've been looking at the computer that long on the bus. Like, it's just gone. I don't get it anymore. I mean, basically, our day-to-day life is, as well as traveling and seeing the world, we also look for barbershops. We look for cool barbershops. We edit. We film. We back up things. You know, we research. And it it is nonstop. But awesome. I'm really just taking it all in. I'm trying to anyway. It's going so fast. That's the thing. I mean, it's going to go by really fast, but you're going to have it all caught on film for the most part. And you'll be able to relive it again, as well yeah. as us. I'm looking really forward okay. to this, and I can't wait for the final product. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a weird thing because we we might have had you know, including the shave videos and then the promos and then the other videos. We might have like 50 videos out by the time we get, <laughs> and then trying to cut all that content into one documentary. Yes. Is going to be Ryan and I have talked about this many times. How sad it is. Yeah, we were gonna. Well, we, Mike was saying, we, like, we just need to get someone on board who's an outside opinion to do it for us because we we hold so much in our hearts from the from the video that if if we if we make the documentary ourselves, it's going to be three days long. So <laughs> <laughs> too close to it. You're too close to the project. How do you deal with that, Ryan? Do you sometimes have a third party come in and with a more objective opinion? I, you know, to be honest, I'm, I, I'm quite brutal on my own edits. It's something you just have to do if you're going to be editing your own project. <laughs> um, my a screenwriting professor at USC used to say, you, you must kill your babies <laughs> or you sometimes must kill your babies. <laughs> and I, yeah. maybe I've taken that, you know, a little too to heart. I, I'm pretty brutal, you know, but you definitely do need that outside perspective. You're actually killing babies, yeah. butcher. I have another uh, hobby I haven't told you about yet, Doug. Um, <laughs> Baby killing. How nice. But yeah, I totally get that. Getting the outside perspective, like, it's it's so, so helpful. Yeah, hopefully it just, I mean, we don't even know what it's going to look like or anything yet. But I mean, like I say, it's, it's, it's not the end because I've got bigger ideas for even more gripping things, you know, that hopefully we can yeah. do. Yeah. And like my own plans as well for when I get back. So, are you thinking? Uh, are you thinking that um, barbering and filmmaking will always be married for you? Or are you thinking that at some point filmmaking will be its own thing as well? You want to make feature narratives, maybe, or what is? How does that exist for you right now? Um, I mean, we, I've talked about you know starting potentially a production company. I don't know how involved I could be in that. Whether it just means I'm the guy that'll get things done. Like a producer yeah. would, but I'm not a producer. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm the one yeah. who do 
that I don't mind doing 10 jobs at once and yeah, you know finding right. money and stuff like that um but I mean I think I've got pretty good ideas for other things that barbering I mean that, that, that aside from barbering but I think initially barbering you know I think is something that could be made into some amazing filmmaking not so much finding out the history but just seeing how we can change people's lives hmm. like I've got an idea I can't tell you about but <laughs> good I was about to say yeah you, you don't have to say anything right now you know no really tell the other filmmaker yeah, yeah, yeah. it's basically like obviously helping Suresh mm-hmm. I think I want to make a documentary about going to open a shop for him whether that's a short one that we make or you know someone else takes it on board I think be really special and really getting into, into his life a little bit more um, and like totally you know to change a per- even if it's just one person's life to change it like that that makes that means more to me than anything so oh it's beautiful it's just like so inspiring talking to you, Miguel. You're just like one of the few people I like to surround <laughs> myself with. You, yeah. you wear a lot of hats because I feel like I have to do the same thing. You know, it's just yeah. it's, it's just so inspiring. And for all of our listeners out there right now, grab your life by your the her by the her suit balls by the her suit balls and just do something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that, that that that's I think that's why I got myself into that mind frame. I was probably unhappy for a long time. I thought <laughs> it was probably being a barber, but actually it was just that I wasn't happy doing what I was doing at that exact time. Um, and I'm like, you know, I try and lay these things like this mentality mm-hmm. into people around me, people who are close to me, um, and just say like 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 you just said, just yeah. if you, if you really want to do something, there's nothing yeah. stopping you. It might be harder for some people. Like I didn't come from a wealthy background. I was never, we, we, we didn't, you know, we weren't brought up with like a silver spoon in our mouths. And, you know, but my mum and dad always taught me yeah. that, you know, even though they weren't like rich people, the way they worked and the way they they did things in life, like working, you know, two jobs, going to university, having three kids, that really showed that if, you know, if you got the opportunity like me, I'm, you know, it's just me and I can go travel the world and make this project happen. Certainly. Then what, what, I mean, I can do it. If they could do that, all what they just did, I could do this. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. How have they reacted to this whole, uh, whole project? <laughs> oh, oh, it was funny that when I first told my dad about it, I was like, dad, it's like son. <laughs> I was like, I'm thinking about going traveling again. And he's like, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> he's like you've, you've you've got a good job you live in london now you know and i was like dad, dad you're not listening and we had a little bit of an argument and then we sat down and i told him the idea and he was like oh wow and like <laughs> nice like my mom, mom and dad and my two sisters and my girlfriend like i could never have bigger supporters in my whole life like they just push me and push me and push me um right. Every day I wake up to messages of support. Every day I wake up to a message from my dad saying, you know, seize the day sort of thing. Like, have a yeah. great day. And that, you know, that's what keeps him going. That's very important. Oh. And that's a big part of it. So how's your girlfriend taking all of this? She's not with you, right? Yeah. It's, no, no. She came to visit. She came to visit in Thailand. No, no. In um, Vietnam and Cambodia. Um but yeah, I mean, she's she's the number one fan. So um, I speak to her all the time. So she's, she, I think she she's pretty coping pretty well. And like creatively, she's you know she's my second part. If I ever need advice about anything, I'll I'll always ask her. You know, if you want to say hi so, to them right now, hello. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually starting. She's actually you know she's taken. I wouldn't like to say I inspired her, but I probably <laughs> did. She probably, she'll say I didn't, but she started her own brand now. She's a fashion designer. So, oh. um, she, you know, she, she's actually just gone, actually, I'm going to do something for myself. And, you know, she's working really hard at it and it's quite proud. Really yeah. cool. See that you're just a ball of inspiration. Basically, I'm just take going through the world, inspiring people. <laughs> yeah. And then. Someone said on YouTube, no, my barber for president. So I'm thinking <laughs> That's about all you it need. now. You got my vote. You have a mustache, however. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Miguel, how can our listeners find out more about you on Twitter, Facebook, the nomad yeah. and, and then uh, if you, the, all, the vid, all the videos are on youtube.com forward slash the nomad barber. And then Twitter, 
come on, come and have a conversation with me on there because not many people do. <laughs> oh, so that. that's the nomad. That's nomad barber as well. Facebook, a lot of I've got a lot of you know support on there. Yep. Lots of friends, family, and then people from all over the world. And Instagram is where we have our main following. If you want to see pictures from the trip, go to the Nomad Barber on Twitter. I mean, uh, Instagram, <laughs> not Twitter. <laughs> I know people are going to really get behind this, hearing you tell the story. Yeah. We need uh, to get this episode <laughs> out as soon as possible because, man, this trip is it's happening now. You know, I mean, the, the clock is ticking. I and, know. Oh, let's get this thing out there, you know. Yep. Yeah, it's it's just crazy all the things that are happening. And I mean, we've got a backlog of videos that are ready to like. I'm, Hong Kong is going to be out this Sunday. Nice. I'm on that now. Hopefully, we get the translation back. And then <laughs> and then we've got Vietnam to come out, Cambodia to come out. We've done a t- one in Thailand, and then we're going to film it. Be filming at the Chiang Mai Lantern Festival. Oh, where I'm going to be trading a, awesome. a haircut for a tattoo off a favor an ah. artist from LA. <laughs> <laughs> very cool man so when are you making your way over to the states oh i will arrive in san fran on the 25th of january excellent well yeah it's it's been a uh it's been a pleasure and an honor really to to sit down and chat with you miguel thanks so much for taking the time i know it's very late at night for you and um, <laughs> yeah yeah just very very happy to get to know more about you and and, and present it to to our listeners and um you know, hopefully support in our in our small way your endeavors as the Nomad Barber. Yes. Again, thank you so much for joining us, Miguel. It has been a real, true and inspiring pleasure. You've really brought the fire to the podcast and we appreciate that. And we appreciate everything you're doing. I'm really like happy that you guys asked me to come on. It was really good to get some things off my chest. <laughs> that, you know, it was nice to and I it was a real honor to come on the podcast as well. And I hope your listeners like it and like the project definitely no doubt so you'll have to check in real soon we will definitely meet up with you in one way shape or form so thank you again and we will talk to you really really soon okay thank you very much bye-bye you know i really love this show you have been listening to the mustache and blade podcast thanks for listening and please leave us a review on itunes almost clean shaven but hardly clean cut mustache and blade